Hey. Well, what What's going doing? on? Why are you causing trouble? My daddy's working. What are you doing? Look at that hair. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're gonna come. You're gonna. Who, who's going home this week on Survivor? Who's getting voted out? Hmm? Is it Soda? <laughs> is it Venus? Is it, is it Hunter? Because he's too strong. <laughs> she, like my wife, she does not watch Survivor. Hey, everybody, it's I, Survivor buddy Gordon Holmes here with the nerdiest thing you're going to do all week. I'm talking about the Survivor 46 power rankings. A big welcome to all my beautiful nerds out there. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, introducing first the man who wagered his own nudity uh, that Banu would go home. <laughs> and unfortunately, he was right. Uh, I'm pleased to welcome Survivor 45 mastermind Drew Basile. Welcome, Drew. Of course. Now, Gordon, I got to tell you, that was supposed to be a bow, but the height doesn't work. I got to tell you, as I'm doing more of these podcasts, I feel like I need like an intro, like a YouTube handle, you know, so I'm thinking each one I'm going to try one out. So like the next time you enter the bold, the beautiful, that was one I was working with another, okay. another CBS property, you know, I stay brand loyal. I don't know. So if you guys got any suggestions, if I lose, you can choose my intro the next time. Uh, but yeah, it's great to be here with you, Gordon. And of course, uh, Owen Knight. Yeah. And next time, next time I'm going to have a couple for you to choose from. Uh, but uh, don't introduce you introduce Owen. That's my job. Right. In my <laughs> I get awkward. I don't know what to say. You know, know. It's like passing the buck. You know, it's it, like musical chairs. Okay, okay. It's your I literally have next to nothing to do when it's when it's when I'm not picking. So leave me this, please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, but <laughs> in my corner, uh, uh, we're down by six points. So I'm going to say, help me, Owen. One, you're my only hope. <laughs> please welcome Survivor 43 finalist Owen Knight. Welcome, Owen. Hello, hello. Good to be back, Drew. Good to see you, man. It's been a little bit. And uh, yeah, I was I was bummed. I tied with Julie a couple weeks ago. I thought we might be able to gain some ground. And uh, I, I enjoyed the, the mergatory episode the other night. So it's good to be here and uh, excited to try to figure out what's going to happen next week because uh, we were just chatting before we started. It's it's tough to predict. So I'm curious how this all shakes out. Yeah, that, that Julie one was a shocker because Drew, when he power ranks, he's like a scalpel. He's like a, a surgeon, like finally cutting. Julie was like a chainsaw. She's like, <laughs> screw it. Let's put all the Anu up in the top three. And it worked out for her. So it worked you, out. You obviously cannot argue uh, with those results. Uh, let's take a look real quick at last week's show. Mergatory is upon us. Uh, and then in the weirdest uh, situation I can remember, it's like the, the tribes came together like the United Nations and threw out names uh, like they were voting on a resolution. Uh, Drew, what did you think of, of that as, as a way to, to kick off a merge? I like, you know, they didn't show it on uh, 45, but that's how we did it. You know, we just sat together and Bruce and I actually got in an argument for about two or three minutes, like yelling at each other during the thing, um, which I was, I was shocked they didn't include. Um, but it was all, you know, water under the bridge. Um, but I like that. And that's really how uh, the earn the merge has to be done. You know, there's a learning curve to figuring out the new mechanics. And Venus, I saw a lot of people supporting her gameplay, really did not understand the mechanics. There is a rich and a poor when it comes to the earn a merge. And if you're wealthy... You want to you want to you want to spread the wealth. You know, you want to get all of your friends at the country club and, and build those alliances. Uh, so I, I like the way they went about it. I think that's absolutely the approach, um, at least from Yanu and from Nami. Yeah. Owen, what would you think of that? Well, I'm I'm on the other end of the perspective. I don't have a membership to the country club. And on 43, I was I was there begging to get my buff and get my ticket into the uh, the, the party there. And uh, it was really stressful, you know, being one of the losers and. While everyone else is at the table wheeling and dealing, we're just there like, well, it's going to be one of us. And you go through your different permutations of people and try to figure out if you can find some common ground. But then, as I discovered, uh, once the winners came back from their their beautiful merge meal, that just that any planning I had done was kind of out of the window. Um, you know, the things that go down at that table are really powerful. You know, the powers that be are, are you know, sending a message down to us plebeians fighting over scraps and um, but yeah, it was, it was interesting to watch. And I, I, I was surprised a little bit at how everyone deferred to Yanu, you know, especially having this cast just seen 44 mm -hmm. and how the Tika three was able to navigate the merge. You would think that they might be on people's radar as a potential, like, Hey, we just saw the three purple people make it to the end on this other season. Perhaps we should prevent that from happening now so we can make it to the end. So I was a little surprised by that. I mean, good, good for Yanu, but um, caught me off guard. Yeah, I think it was Mariah who said that, like, you know, when when Tiffany picked the right team, that gives the numbers advantage to everybody who's eating that meal. So it, it must be tough to to kind of go against the the tide on that. I thought it was interesting. The challenge draw was hilarious. 
uh, oh my with, gosh. Uh, Eliza Orleans had made the point, like, do a schoolyard pick. And I know the reason Survivor hasn't done a schoolyard pick in a long time, because I was there, I saw it in, perp- in person, was when they picked the tribes in Gabon. It was a mm-hmm. train wreck because mm-hmm. everybody, they started with the older competitors and they wanted to, uh, I, I believe it was, uh, I'm so bad with names, Jillian didn't want to pick people. She, she picked people that, that she thought she might have a chance against in a vote, not necessarily people who'd be good at challenges. And it ended up so lopsided. So I know that's why they kind of steer away from those kinds of things now. But in a situation like this, where you already have relationships, where, you know, you winning this challenge, uh, after you win this challenge, these these teams go away. Like you, w- this makes sense for a, a schoolyard mm-hmm. pick where you would pick the people you think are most likely to help you. Uh, Owen, what, what was your take when you saw uh, the results of that rock draw? Of that, uh, rock draw? I mean, I couldn't believe it. Just like the statistical improbability of that happening was remarkable. And I I really got a kick out of uh, Orange all saying their height as they went down the line. It reminded me of the Key and Peele uh, East-West Bowl sketches, you know, like a football intro where you're saying where you went to college. And yeah, I mean, it's 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 a little tough because like on one hand, you, you know, you say like, oh, Survivor, the puzzle is a great equalizer, like challenges should inherently be competitive and fair. But to even have Jeff immediately say like, oh, well, this team's at an advantage, the one with all the dudes, like it's, it makes it, you know, it's, it's all luck. So certainly it's not rigged or anything like that, but it's just uh, maybe not the most fair thing in the world, but they did a really valiant job. I mean, they were right there up until the very end. So it was a good challenge. I liked the human ladder. Um, The small people were squirting their way through the net there. I was impressed. They, they put up a good fight. Yeah. Uh, Drew, how'd you feel about that? Well, you know, Gordon, you know me that when it comes to the edit, I'm something of a conspiracy theorist. You know, I'm always I'm always looking for the, the edit threads. And one thing I've noticed with with this episode in particular is the failed underdog. The overdog wins. You know, they're like, oh, we're really in it. They keep bringing that over and over again. And then they lose. They suck. You know, they just get annihilated by Hunter. This Banu, you know, he gets his second chance. He gets cut off at the knees. Mo, she's going to have her, you know, growth moment. gets annihilated. And then you have Venus. Oh, I'm going to be so powerful. And then has no power. So I think that it really kind of you know puts a point on this theme uh, that, that the overdogs are are gonna are gonna come through, and I wonder if that's like maybe an early merge theme, or if that's the theme for the season, or maybe there'll be one exceptional underdog. But it's just some, something that was so obvious in that challenge um, that like really put it on my radar for like the season going, and certainly you know my my power rankings. But isn't that something that kind of speaks to society today? Like, I feel like the youth of America often feel like they're the underdog compared to like, you know, the big corporate overlords. So a lot a lot for us to relate to uh, coming mm-hmm. out of that challenge. Uh, once they got to the beach, uh, Siga sticks together. Nami shows their cracks. Normally that would play against Nami. This time it was the exact opposite. Uh, they Siga really miscalculated heading into this by making it seem like they were solid as a rock. Came back to bite Mariah. Uh, Owen, how'd you feel about that? I thought that was really like just a a fascinating turn of events. Uh, Fascinating is the perfect word for it. I mean, it goes counter to what you expect to happen. You know, you've you've been told and you've seen in previous seasons that presenting a united front makes it like amenable for other people to work with you and that, you know, oh, well, we can't wiggle our way in there. We might as well join them and figure it out. But um, for Mo in particular, I was really bummed that uh, I don't want to say she totally blew it, but. I mean, she kind of did blow it in the conversation when she was asked about what had happened at the previous tribal. Um, I think presenting herself as a free agent certainly could have saved her in this instance. There could have been some momentum against Venus there. So, yeah, that was a bummer. And it it is interesting because like in the in your head as a fan and you're thinking that back on like previous iterations and other seasons, you would think that the United Front would be the way to go. But it uh, didn't work out. And now I'm curious what happens if Nami and Yanu try to just finish the job or if there's room to wiggle. And I think it'll come down to the tribe breakdowns or the, the groupings uh, this next episode. Yeah. Drew, Drew, do you think Mariah miscalculated by saving the fact that, uh, that that her tribal council wasn't a unanimous vote? Do you think she made a mistake not breaking that up before tribal, giving people time to think about it? Or do you think it was better to try to have like that big moment and hopefully that would sway things? Or I, I guess sometimes once you get to tribal, people's minds are pretty set. What did you think about that? Yeah, you know, I did not think it was, I thought Q kind of overreacted about the issue. Um, I didn't think it was a big deal. I certainly didn't really think it was a a misplay. Um, The thing with it is, is that she, she didn't have a lifeline. You know, Yanu did not want to work with her. She didn't really have the connections with power players that needed to work, that would need to, you know, cross the cross lines to assist her on Nami. So she really had no option. And so while like I sympathize, and obviously it's it's a shame to feel embarrassed or made to look embarrassed at tribal council, 
I really, I really don't know what the alternative would have been. I mean, like rolling over and showing your belly probably would not have been that effective because I think the reality is that Q uh, was calling the shots for Yano on this one. And he wanted to work with Tevin and with Hunter. Um, and they would rather conserve a number that they can get rid of later um, than go against Mariah. So I don't think there was anything she could do. Yeah. A, a silver lining to all of this is that, you know, Mariah said that her favorite player was Abi Bracco, which was a mistake because she's a very savvy player. Going forward, some more obscure players might get their names called out. Like if somebody asks me, I'm a total Fabio guy. Like, oh boy, did I love Fabio. Uh, my favorite player of all time. I want to play just like him. So going forward, that might open the door uh, for, for different players. Drew, like like when, next time you head out and somebody asks yeah. you aside from yourself, like what name would you throw out there to try to, to, to keep people off your back? My first time, I told everyone I was just going to be like Ryan Ulrich. And uh, <laughs> I thought that was pretty accurate, you know, both both pre and post. Uh, so, you know, pat on the back for the foresight. But again, the Aubrey Bracco thing, like who really cares? Again, it's another issue of when you're going against somebody and you have the power, your marshalling power, just psychologically, you know, it is what it is. You demonize that person, right? You make them bad. So you get yourself moral justification and momentum builds. So saying she's like Aubrey is just another way of demonizing somebody you already want to go. Yeah. Uh, Owen, I think Drew dropped the ball because the second he says, uh, Ryan, I'm thinking super fan. Uh, <laughs> so uh, who, who's like a well-known name that might not get you too much heat out there? I think, um, I think Keith Nail could be a good one. R.I.P. Keith. <laughs> but, um, you know, he's an iconic character. He's fun in challenges. He's a soundbite machine. Everybody loves Keith. You know, that's that's a good one that I think I would mention. Plus, he and I have the Louisiana connection. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't. Did anyone ever ask me on my season? I think I would say Wu kind of frequently because um, obviously we have the hair and we're both Korean and. You know, I don't think anyone would accuse him of being the most intimidating strategist in the world. So I, I was okay with that one. All right. So diving into last week, Kelly had Ryan spot 12, uh, Franny had her in spot 10. So the current score tier, uh, Reba four, uh, minus one, plus one, 68, uh, Gordon's wonderful all-stars of heroic victory, 62, a six point difference. Oh, we, we need you, Owen, buddy. We need you. Um, let, let, let's hop into the message. A lot of, uh, first of all, Two vote outs this week. So a lot of points on the board, but we're really relying on you, champ. Uh, so hopping in the message board to see how the viewers did. And if you haven't been playing along, feel free to join in. Like, you know, um, a lot of people seem to be joining as we go. Uh, last week, nobody got it right. This week, we had a couple. Uh, spot 13, we had Eric Swain and Oka Denner. Uh, at spot 12, tied with Kelly. We had B. Lehman, Ice Cafefi, Ghetto Hamster, Joel M. Gallagher, Chris Hamowan, Sean Gauden, Dominic Reisland, uh, Logan Smith, Log by Bulb, Fat Ass the Great, uh, it's best name ever. Uh, spot 11, uh, Charlie Schechter, uh, Sydney Allen, Zian Ramos, Dior Thunu, uh, JP15 is me, uh, Baby Fox, Duke to Duke to do, uh, and Kristen Dicker. Uh, tied with Franny at spot 10, we've got Dylan W, Carpe Diem, Stephen M, Canado, Potato Dog, love Potato Dog, uh, JM Chap, Jenna Dam, Mouse Sparks, Survivor Drip, Nathan Bomber, Brandon Davies, and Perfect Star, Shot in the Dark, Slow Comments Things, and Ferret Bandit, Rising from the Ashes. Uh, Ferret Bandit was in spot 10 last week. What a comeback. Don't call it a comeback. It's been here for years. Uh, at spot nine, we've got Yuki PT2LM, Saxophonia, AM Long 14, Dot Motion, HMP Staff, Rat Gravity, Nadia X01, and Vincent Maestas, also Rowan 3123. Spot eight, we've got Andrew Gulia, Cody Brahman, Kevin A, Brandon Azers, and C, Blazer C. Spot six, Nikki 20, Amy Robin, and Amanda Gagne. Spot five, Jag 519, Huffy 901, JK Morgan, and Sue Scott. And all right. So last week, Cats Rule the World came in second to last place and was concerned that he or she didn't receive any cyber hugs for such a low showing. Fortunately, this week, Cats Rule the World, we've got a ton of cyber hugs for you if you're willing to accept them because Cats had Mariah in spot three. So here you go. If, if, you, if you want the hugs, they're right there for you. It's rough. It's right. Yeah, again, merge episodes are a bee sting uh, to rank. So please don't, don't get too down on yourself. Uh, there are still plenty of points left on the board. Uh, and this week we've got two eliminations. I did two, two, so four, only two, two eliminations. Um, so anything can happen, uh, which again is a challenge for you two. Uh, we don't know at this point if they're going to be split into two tribes to vote, but given the past history, that seems to make sense. Uh, you know, uh, excuse me, Drew, as we get into this, as we get into what is going to be a very tricky ranking, you know, how are you approaching this? You know, it, it was funny uh, when you mentioned Julie a little bit earlier as a chainsaw, because I think that, that I, I, I might have taken some stuff unintentionally from her from her strategy this go. I think that this is probably 
like the, the the episode with the biggest opportunity for point gain or point loss. Like it's very unpredictable. This is a cast that hates each other. And you can tell on the show, you can tell in all of their public appearances, they don't like each other. So it's crazy. So clearly some things are going to go down. Uh, and, and I think that this, this could be the, uh, the week that sermon sticks. See Owen doors open. He's, he's, he's ranking like a nuclear bomb, like a chainsaw. There's all there's, it's going to be a mess. How, how no, are you approaching this? I, well, I'm a little intimidated. I'm not going to lie. Drew is a really, really shrewd game player. I was impressed by your whole game in 45, dude. And um, I'm trying to wrap my head around what could happen. And yeah, like you said, Drew, there's so many variables that could go in. And it certainly has been interesting watching uh, social media over the past 72 hours or so. Oh my God. Seeing what's going on. It's been it's been fun as an observer. But uh, yeah, there's clearly some uh, some bad blood, uh, as, Ch- as Charlie would say. But um, yeah, it should be should be interesting. I I'm trying to like not read too much into the edit, but certainly that influences my decisions a little bit. But uh, I'm curious to see how many uh, overlaps we have. Owen, is is Drew in your head? He's not quite <laughs> in my head, but I I respect my opponent greatly. I oh, think he's he's a really smart fella, as you should. But like, we need you. I'm just I know I'm trying to lock it in, Gordon. The uh, homies so, homies need the points. We do. Uh, and just so you know, there are a couple bets going on this season. Uh, first of all, if the Reba Four minus one plus one wins, I have to send them all sandwiches. It was an Austin thing. Uh, and again, I'm not. It's going to be gift cards or something like that. I don't. I don't have the. I don't have the budget to actually send out sandwiches. Uh, if if the if Holmes Holmes, if the uh, Gordon's All Stars of of Victorious Glory win, uh, Julie is going to send us cupcakes. Um, Girl Scout themed cupcakes. So s'more they cupcakes. They sounded delicious. I'm very like uh, I love I love s'more. Uh, like I'm on a real s'more kick lately. Uh, these so cupcakes are insane. Oh, so you like, had them? No, no, these cupcakes are ridiculous. Like prepare yourself. Okay, this is worth it. She sends them with ice packs. The you, wow. you you're in for a real treat. I, I might. I, we're gonna have. We're gonna have to organize like some kind of throw because yeah. I, I was, I was just gonna <laughs> say if if you throw this. I would happily send half of my cupcakes. Yeah, also, I'll give you half of mine. Yeah, yeah, think about, you'll get <laughs> half of the cupcakes from everybody. Um, and then also, if 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 our team loses and it's Franny Marin's fault, all of us get to be in Franny's wedding someday. She's not engaged or anything like that, but just know that that. So there's a lot on the board. Uh, I, 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 it, it seems like Drew is not as confident in his picks this week that he's going to put a DoorDash bet or a nudity bet, which which gives me a little bit of hope uh, going into this week. Yeah, this is a tough week to uh, put any skin in the game, but uh, we shall see. We shall see. All right. The rules of the Survivor Power Rankings are as follows. Each week, a member of each team will create a separate power ranking. The ranking of the person who is voted out of the next episode, and in this uh, instance, two people, uh, will determine the number of points the players will earn. For example, if Tiffany is voted out of this episode uh, and Drew has her in second place and Owen has her in first place, Drew's team will receive two points and Owen's team will receive one point. At the end of the season, the team with the most points will be named the Survivor 46 Power Rankings Challenge Champion and receive cupcakes or sandwiches based on who wins. Uh, One important note, rankings are not based on who the player thinks is going to win the entire season. The smart strategy is to rank players based on how safe you think they are in the upcoming episode. All right, Drew, ready to lead us off? For sure. And I'll tell you, you know, Gordon, it was just Easter. And I, I I was in the mood and I was thinking the last shall be first. And so this is somebody I've had low all season. And suddenly, I think Kenzie is number one. I think Kenzie is safe going through because she had such a high profile and now there's no talk at all. She's she's in with if she's in with Tiffany from the the next episode preview, whatever it's called. Uh, I think that she's successfully lowered her threat level, and I think that she's not the the, the casualty will come from Nami or it'll come from uh, Sika. I think I think she's you know steering the middle. So she's my number one. All right. Oh, and who's your number one? Yeah, pretty similar for me. I've got Tiffany at my number one. I think uh, Yanu is in the driver's seat here. I was saying earlier, I was impressed and surprised that uh, the other two tribes seem to be turning for that to them, even after we've seen what happened with Tika. Uh, we saw, as Drew mentioned, on Next Time for Survivor, Tiffany and Kenzie talking about maybe going after Q, uh, but Tiffany and Q also have a strong bond. So uh, no matter how you slice it, I think of the three of them, she is in a really good spot. And uh, yeah, I think she's pretty safe this week. So number two, I've got Maria. Uh, I feel like she's in a pretty good spot. I like how she and Charlie work together throughout the pre-merge. And to me, it feels like they're kind of the nexus of power of the remaining Seagas. Uh, I know it was a bummer to lose Mo, but clearly they were okay with it. They had iced her out at the vote against Jem anyway. Um, she still has the parent connection with Tim and then the option to go with that uh, the plus one alliance. So that's a, a path forward for her. 
or she could keep working with Charlie and figure something out there. So I think she's in a pretty solid spot. Okay. Uh, my number two, you know, I'm, I'm copying Owen, but I'm a little late. It is Tiffany. I think that Tiffany, again, has that nice Yanu middle ground position that's going to protect her. It's really amazing that they can watch 44. They can see the, the Tika 3 cruise through between two fractured tribes. Um, and the Tika 3, they were very good players, but they kind of underplayed their skill a little bit. Like, it wasn't immediately apparent. Yanu, I mean, all you got to do is look at them, and you can tell that they're competent players. They've already taken charge, and it was acknowledged in Tribal Council. And nobody cares. It's astounding. Um, but I think they're going to get away with it for a little bit, at least. And Tiffany's got the idol to make sure that that, you know, worst comes to worst, she'll be safe. I really think she is a uh, a very secure number two pick. And my number three, again, copying Julie's strategy, I'm going with uh, Q for the, the same rationale. Yano is cruising through. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an opportunity to earn some cupcakes. Um, <laughs> but again, I see him as a, um, well, you know, I see him as being well connected with uh, Hunter and Tevin. Uh, which means that it's going to be very difficult to get the momentum to go against him. And I think that probably based on the way that uh, he approached the earn the merge vote, which seemed to be very aggressive and seems like people picked that up quickly. Um, I, I bet you he's underestimated a little bit out there in the beach. Um, so for that reason, I, I, again, don't think he'll be a blindside target um, at the split vote the way that like, I think on your season, it was a little bit later, but split vote was a great opportunity to get rid of James. I think that happened. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't see that that kind of that kind of situation coming towards Yano on this one. Drew, if this is a ploy for us to get cupcakes, you, sir, are the greatest American hero. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to save up some money to internationally ship our cupcakes right. over to him if we get them. Um, so three to me, I've got Tevin. Um, Tevin is in that group of six, that plus one alliance. I don't know if they've got an official name yet, but um, Tevin, to me, I think he's still got a lot of game left. He's been fascinating to watch. I, I waxed poetic about him on, on the last video I did where just, you know, he's just fun to watch. Just the way he speaks is really captivating. And uh, he seems to have a good head for the game. Um, I liked how they sussed out that um, the people trying to say, like, no, we should keep Mo made it a better reason to get rid of Mo. Um, so I, I think he's in a pretty good spot there. He's got options. He seems to have a connection with Soda. Obviously, him and Hunter are pretty tight. And uh, I'm, I'm hopeful he's got some more run left in him. And uh, I just think if Nami suffers some losses, I, I don't think it'll be him. I think there's enough people in his corner that would kind of protect him. And then four, I, I'm not as top-loading Yanu as Drew is, but I do have Kenzie at my number four. Um, I think she is, as we've said, in a really good spot with Yanu. Um, very, very impressive. Tiffany's got the idol that could potentially protect her. We see her and Tiff talking about maybe going against Q. And uh, yeah, I, it's uh, I, she's she's one of those players, I think, that would read as extremely dangerous to, to a lot of people, but you would also want to play with her. I don't know. She's very charismatic. She seems to have this real ability to pull people in and, and feel like genuine conversations. And I, I just feel like she'll be able to continue to make connections and uh, keep herself safe here as the Yanus, as Drew said, perfectly like continue to get away with it. All right. Number four for me. And again, it, it's so tough to rank this episode uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, but this was somebody I had a lot lower until I saw that they got the like mid season interview right now. CBS is doing some mid season interview and they chose Emily Flippin last time. Obviously it's who they want to be like one of their big characters and bring back. Um, and it was, it was Hunter. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I didn't, I didn't read it. I just saw he had one and it was Hunter. <laughs> so I figured to myself, like, gosh, there's no way that guy doesn't make the jury if he's getting the interview. Uh, so for that reason, I think, I think Hunter is very safe. Uh, just purely from promotional standpoint. Uh, he He's, uh, he's locked as my number four and I, I did my number five. Okay. My number five, uh, again, five, six, and seven, I'm really not confident about. Um, but I do have uh, Maria. For the reason that she has an idol, which counts for everything on these split, these little groups, never is it more obvious that, you know, the vote's going to go one way or the other when you're in these like these halved groups of six, because people don't want to, you know, play for the end yet. You still have to conserve alliances and conserve these these voting blocks. Um, but then also there's only a handful of people to account for. So it's very easy to track whose you know motives are where. Uh, for that reason, I think that if the worst comes to comes to bear, she'll be able to mobilize the idol and uh, squeak out of it. So that's my number five. Uh, before we move on, uh, the the midseason interview was was a Dalton Ross interview with Hunter, and just thanks for not saying his name. 
because <laughs> that guy, unnamed survivor journalist. That guy. I like Are someone. Serious? To, yeah, no, no, I love the guy. Uh, okay. We did it. We, so I like someone did like an April Fool's joke, and it was like Jeff admits that you know Survivor should be thirty nine days or something like that, and it was written by Ralton Doss, and I was I was, I was, I was entertained. That's good. Um, well, I completely agree with Drew here, not on a particular person, but that this is tough to rank. So we're entering my territory where I am not super confident. These are kind of my middle four. I feel pretty good about the first four I did. But at number five, I've got Ben. I know we saw in the next time on Survivor, he said that he's screwed. So I suppose he doesn't win individual immunity for his group. But I just I just want to root for Ben. I, I really enjoy the guy. His vibes are immaculate. And I, I don't think of the remaining Seagas that he would jump up immediately. This might be me reading into the edit too much, but Tim, we do not know a whole lot about. And then Charlie's name came up last week. So I think both of them could be easier pickings among the remaining Seagas. So I think Ben um, is in a decent spot here. And then for my number six, I've got Q. Uh, so I do have all the Yanus in the top half here. Um, usually whoever they show being, you know, conspired against in the preview does not end up going home. So I don't think he's going anywhere this week, but it is interesting that Kenzie and Tiffany are already entertaining that conversation. Um, that feels possibly a little premature to me, but, um, there could be a lot of momentum against Q eventually, you know, guys like him and Hunter, the, the larger, more physical people, you know, they usually don't have a long shelf life once you enter the merge. So I think his day is coming, but I don't necessarily think it'll be this week. Gosh, some of the stuff you're saying is uh, is really making me doubt my my rankings. Because I agree, I think I think it's very logical. My number six, I have somebody I bet is a lot lower for you, and I, I'm 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 worried about is Liz. Uh, I basically just with the way she's portrayed in her position on a tribe, I don't think is going to have you know the distance in it. She's like she's kind of a placeholder boot, you know. She's like that ninth place boot, like that Kane, that Kendra, where interesting person. But thematically, they don't really know what to do with. And that's why she got, you know, unfortunately, zero confessionals at the year in the merge. Um, for that reason, I I do think it might not be her time yet. But, you know, maybe it is. Maybe they want they want to use their airtime to focus on one of the other the boots, one of the other outcomes, and she'll go. I have her at six um, just because I think that this is a cast that is, you know, and they got to answer their pants. They're ready to make big moves. Um, and I'm not sure she would classify as the big move at this point. Uh, my number seven is Tevin. Tevin is ha somebody I have a lot lower uh, than you, Owen. I think you had him in, like, number three. Mm -hmm. For me, Tevin is, like, Kelly part two. Like, T Tevin, and I think maybe Tiffany, they've highlighted as people who are very competent, who have, like, kind of, like, you know, they're triple threats, and they want that to be, like, their big shocking blind side. Survivor's all about these experimental new techniques and showing no information to get, like, a maximum outcome from somebody who seemed perfect. Uh, I, I think that that could be in, in, in Tevin's future. Um, so be interesting to see. Uh, I feel like if I was Sega and I wanted to take out Anami, Tevin would be top of the list. And I, I literally have been in this exact situation against a tribe that had good numbers with, with swing votes at the thing. And, you know, Kelly, Kelly, Bruce, top of the list. So, so for that reason, I think Tevin is seven. Well, I, I appreciate your compliment on my rankings, but I feel the exact same about yours. Like it's, it's really, uh, you make some very, very good points here. Um, seven, I've got Hunter. So similar, uh, ballpark to you. Um, I think his plus one Alliance with Tevin and Tim and Q, um, you know, it has some legs and they, they seem to communicate and, uh, you know, there's a decent shot in a group of six. He's going to win individual immunity. The guy mm -hmm. is good at everything. I mean, he breathes through the puzzle, his basketball skills are there, the sandbag tossing, the swimming, he's good at everything. So, um, I wouldn't be shocked if he had a necklace around his neck on Wednesday night. And uh, yeah, I think it's it's not quite his time. I, I am nervous for him and Q moving forward, like I mentioned on, on Q's ranking. But uh, I think he's probably good this week. And then eight. I don't know, I, Owen. Hunter's uh, logo recall? Not yeah, the best. True. <laughs> you if know how important that is on the show. So. A very good point. Drew, do you think you could have won that uh, that that logo arranging challenge? Yeah, totally. Because like before you go, you're like doing everything to prep. But I'm pretty lazy. So any opportunity that I can prep without doing extra work, I love that. So like watching <laughs> the seasons, I, I I think I could have done that coming I off of. Uh, and it's yeah. the, the person behind the Survivor multi logo. Um, yeah, I absolutely would have yeah. based that. Of course. And Drew, I loved watching you on yours where you got the matching right. And you uh, 
like threw it down and celebrated really big. I, I like that a lot. That was, I appreciated how hyped up you got on that. Thank you, Owen. Yeah, no, I'm kind of a showboat. Um, no, I loved although it. although I loved we're talking it. about immunity victories, you know, I, I don't really think I hold a candle, but, but, but <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take that. Yeah, man. Um, okay. So it's eight to me. I've got Charlie here. Um, I hope it's not Charlie. I really like Charlie. He seems to have a really good head on his shoulders and he's open to a lot of different ideas. I loved his Charlie's Angels thing he had going. But at least from my experience, I found that once someone's name has been said, it is a heck of a lot easier to keep saying it. Um, so I, I do worry that if people keep going after Sega, uh, his name could come up for sure. Um, but I, I don't know. He's still got Maria looking after him. He seems to be making some other connections. Him and Tim seem to possibly have something going there. So I'm not sure. That's why he's kind of in my middle range here. But I, I am a touch worried about Charlie. Yeah, um, so it's my turn. So for eight, I, I share your worries. Charlie's eight for me. It's tough because I think that from the from the episode preview, Kelly sent this to me today, um, like like a stray vote causes chaos. Okay, well, that's obviously Charlie and Venus having some <laughs> cataclysmic blow up. Um, but by the same token, he could be shielded from, from an advantageous uh, tribe split. So I think narratively it wouldn't really make sense for Charlie to go, but I think he has very little protection um, just on, like on the ground. Um, so for that reason, I'm going to compromise. He's not my lowest, but he is a... Number nine, right there with him, I have Ben. Um, mostly, I basically just got baited by the next time on Survivor. Like, I'm screwed. What what that, to me, uh, signifies is that um, they don't have the numbers, and they're worried, and they're scared, and they're going to try and make some kind of big move. That's why Charlie got that narrative confession. That will be the, the storyline of the next episode, in my opinion, whether or not it works. Um, and I just somehow get the sense that if it fails, uh, Ben is going to be seen as an easier person to remove socially than Charlie is, um, mm -hmm. because they won't alienate Maria if Yanu wants to, wants to work with her and Tim. Um, there's this, there's very much a sense that you don't want to break the ice at this early point in the merge. And then once you break the ice, then it, you know, it's feasting. Everybody's going in, everybody's cutting, but as long as the ice is there, you want to skate and you want to choose easy people to pick off. Um, and I think Ben is easier than Charlie. So he's my number nine. Drew, is there anything to the idea that Ben is so shook by whatever happens to him next week that he forgets his gimmick of saying everything rocks or doesn't rock and said, <laughs> I'm screwed? Like, that's the thing is, like, he is so legitimately concerned for his place in the game, <laughs> he forgot his whole thing. So that's an excellent. I, 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 I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm shook as well. That's when you know he's truly scared. Man, I like the logic. I like the logic, Drew. Um, so I'm at nine here. So I've got soda at my number nine here. Uh, to Drew's point about wanting to skate and not break the ice, to me, Soda feels like someone who would be a relatively inoffensive person to pick off. Uh, you know, we saw kind of the, the seeds of that being planted in the pre-merge over on Nami, where Tevin was, you know, floating out the idea of voting out Soda if they had lost a tribal uh, an immunity challenge and had to go to tribal in the Nami group. So he, she, he has already offered her up as someone who could go home. From Nami. So I think that might be possible here. Um, a lot of it, again, is going to break down or go based off the tribe breakdown, but I don't think she has as many connections as maybe she thinks she does. Um, we saw the bickering with Venus when Hunter was doing his idol search. And then, yeah, Tevin's already floated her out. So uh, I think she's in the danger zone here as we get into my bottom four. Um, and then moving on to 10, I've got Tim here. Um, I don't know exactly why I put a Sega not at the bottom. He's my last Sega here. But um, Tim, again, we we haven't gotten a ton from Tim. Um, we, we started seeing him a little bit more uh, this past episode. But overall, he has not been a huge part of the narrative of the season. Um, you know, he thinks he's got Maria locked in. But I, I did think it was a little curious just the way they explained how he didn't tell her about this plus one alliance. So on yeah. paper, they have it. And I realize I'm con uh, contradicting myself a little bit when I was saying the plus one alliance is a reason to have like Tevin safer, but just the way it was portrayed, I wonder if like Q and Tevin and Hunter might say, mm, I don't know if Tim's hundred percent in here. Maria didn't seem fully on board. And uh, just from the, the edit perspective, he seems like possibly an easy person to kind of clip out of the story. Totally. I, I completely agree with you on Tim, and I have him lower, so 
I will, I, I you know, continue to agree with you at a later point. But for t- 10 for me is Sudasia. Again, um, Sudasia really has not gotten much content um, to make me to make me root for her. I notice a lot of people on this season speaking platitudes. You know, they talk with these patent phrases to each other because they don't want to give up information. And it's just very obviously formulaic. And like this was something you saw with Sega. Like they keep saying hitting hard. Oh, they hit me hard. They hit me hard. Right. There's just like a there's just like a phrase you say. But people notice that I noticed and I saw 60 minutes of their 24 hour day. Um, And and it it doesn't scream very, you know, genuine. And so Deja is somebody who I feel like is so easy to read. And like Venus clocks are every conversation they have. Tevin clocks are. Liz clocks her, Hunter clocks her, you know, how, how long before, before Siga and Yanu flock her. Um, so for that reason, like, you know, she's pretty low. Um, they were talking about a blind side the next time on Survivor. Again, you know, it's really a perfect time for that blind sa- side. Um, and I think like something that would make sense narratively and and feel to them like a blind side would be going after her. Um, so it does seem to make sense. Um, 11 for me. I always forget what the, the order is, but 11 for me, yeah, I have Venus. Um, it's tough because like, I would like, I want to root for Venus, you know? And yeah, maybe taking Charlie out is the, the intellectual move, but I'm, I'm somebody who got a lot of flack, perhaps deservedly for like playing chess rather than playing the social game. But it, it's very interesting. To me, those same people on the internet can't recognize that <laughs> Venus is the best example in years of playing the strategic game without playing a social game. She has no social capital to mobilize for any of her strategic decisions. And then she founders and then she gets mad and the fans get mad that they can't work. I mean, you have to be building more social bonds. She's alienated all three tribes at the at the first day of the merge. It's, it, that feels very tough to recover from and to win the game. Yep. Yep. I, I will be talking about Venus very shortly, but uh, first at 11, I have Liz. So this is shaping up to be our biggest discrepancy Mm -hmm. of the week, I think. Liz, to me, you know, I I really liked what you were talking about in terms of, like, reading her edit and trying to figure out how she fits in the storyline. But just from my season, poor Dwight went out in this spot. He he went out right after Mergatory, and he barely got any screen time in, like, the four episodes leading up to his boot. And Liz not getting a confessional last week certainly makes me uh, eliminate her as a potential winner, but it, it does make me very nervous for her here. Um, I think she could be an easy uh, sacrificial lamb for the NAMI group if they're forced to capitulate based on how the numbers break down uh, in their tri- tribe swaps or um, voting groups, whatever you want to call it. Um, so perhaps like if she's in one group and Venus is in the other, they could both end up going home, which is how I have Venus at 12. Um, completely agree with you, Drew. Um, she is just like, you know, she's just running in and and not filtering herself at all, which I respect as a human being. But in this game, it makes it really difficult to execute anything. I, I was trying to think of like when you mentioned chess, it's almost like her brain is is thinking about where she wants to move the pieces, but she hasn't recruited hands or arms mm. to execute those moves at all. Yeah. And she's just trying to mentally push everything around like like Professor X or something. But um yeah, it's just, it's it's rough to watch. I mean, I, I feel bad, like she's having a negative experience in the, in the social media side of things we've discussed already, but um, it seems like she has not made too many best buds among the cast. So I, I worry that uh, she might just get flipped off here. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. The social media thing is a whole can of worms. I agree. Um your points on Liz are good. I I think Liz is where I screwed up. I think I'm I'm I, I was doing this on my phone, you know, earlier today. I think I think I'm really gonna lose some points with Liz, but I'm not gonna lose some points to my number twelve pick. Um, who I I would be willing to to near guarantee goes home. This I think Tim is going home. I don't think there's any way Tim makes it through this this group of six thing. It's very bizarre because it's not it's not gonna come true. Right. This group of six is not going to work together long term. So why so much focus? It's obvious because somebody within the six screws up to, to elevate themselves as a threat. Tim, I didn't like the way Tim handled some some key conversations uh, mm-hmm. last episode. I think that he's very vulnerable um, now that now that Sika has shown blood first. I think that um, she, he doesn't have allies who will back him. Um, and I think that Q is going to want him gone. So all of these things are going to combine to make Tim seem like like a, a further person up the ladder to, to gut 
in Sega. And I probably suspect that they think Tim is more important in that tribe dynamic than uh, he is. Because since he was their first point of contact and he's pulling in Maria um, and, and Charlie and Ben, who have more power on the bottom, so they were very meek. They weren't showing that. I think that um, there were, people are going to mistake Tim as as being a person to take out to cripple that tribe when in actuality he's he's an appendage. Um, so he's 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 12. I like it. You're you're making me rethink a lot. Yeah, I think the way you feel about your Liz pick, I'm feeling about my Tim pick right now. That was really really well well said. Get a room, you two. Sorry, go, sorry, <laughs> Dory. This is supposed to be a battle, and you, oh, you're so smart. Thank hey, you so but much. If if Liz and Tim go home, then we still earn points as a team. We'll be up three at that point, I think. Okay. So we've got a good good That's spread right. between I our Liz placements here. So sorry, Liz. I hope you go home. <laughs> All right, the picks are locked in. Any of your picks in the comments section below. Also, which uh, which Girl Scout cookie do you think makes the best cupcake? Let us know. Uh, feel free to, to keep score and play along. We're all playing with the, the honor system, so don't worry about it. Uh, we had one lock, uh, Charlie in spot eight. Uh, not a great spot for Charlie, not the worst. Uh, and we had the disparity. It, it was a pretty significant one. Uh, Drew had Liz in spot six. Owen had her in spot 11. And... Man, I want those, cu those cupcakes so bad. So, Liz, I love you. You got to go. Uh, Mariah Part de out the door. Sorry. Um, if, if you enjoy this content and if you've been here for 50 plus minutes, I think you do, uh, please do us a solid like the video, subscribe to the channel, and gently nudge uh, the notification button. Some people tell you to smash it. Don't. Computers are expensive. Phones are expensive. Uh, Drew, uh, Owen, uh, if we had a budget for it, uh, I'd be playing playing with the boys by Kenny Loggins right now. Uh, this is so much fun, so <laughs> insightful. I want to thank you both so much for being here. Uh, until next time, uh, for Drew, uh, for Basile, for Owen, and for myself, uh, thank you for joining us. And hope to see you next week uh, for even more of the Survivor 46 Power Ring.